World Travelers of Reddit. What's your travel hack that you think everyone should know? A small pocket USB power bank has been the best investment ever when traveling. Also, don't delete from your phone throw away your boarding passes before entering your destination. I've seen border security ask for them. Your boarding pass is also immensely convenient if your bags don't come off the plane. The baggage agents can track your bag faster with the sticker on the back of your boarding pass. Do your research. Pack light. Keep soft copies of important travel documents in your phone and cloud storage. Get a universal adapter and a power bank. A copy of your passport and it on email cloud is super helpful if you ever get robbed or lose one. Way easier to get your stuff replaced if you have everything you can present to your embassy. I travel internationally 1-3 times a month, and the two best tips I have are 1. Travel light. Don't bring just in case items. Plan to buy them at your destination if you really need them, which you don't. 2. Get a phone plan that allows free data roaming. For example, T-Mobile in US. 3. Mobile in Europe having a working phone is a game changer, and makes basically every aspect of travel easier. A bonus tip. Two inflatable pillows. One for the neck, one for the low back, an eye mask, and earplugs make a huge difference sleeping on a plane. It's been mentioned before but as of the 15th of June all EU SIM cards can be used in all EU countries again. If a hot chick starts hitting you on a bar unsolicited she is probably a H or a scam artist. That's okay with me. Check 13 times for passport and never leave it in the pocket on the plane. I can't imagine putting my passport in the pocket. Makes me anxious just thinking about it. Bring baby wipes if you are going to places where you have no access to bath or shower. This has worked for me in less developed nations. If you make a connection with someone providing a service, driver, daily tour guide, etc. Hire them. If I feel that a driver is doing a good job and doesn't try to rip me off, I offer to hire them for the week. That way, it is one less thing to worry about. For example, I had a great rickshaw driver in India that didn't try to hustle me or screw me over. I enjoyed his company and offered to hire him for the whole week. I said that I wanted to be picked up at 8am every morning and set a good price for his services that I would pay at the end of the week. It was awesome. No hassle. No haggling over the price after every taxi ride. And no hustle. He recommended places to eat for us, introduced us to his family, and gave us a genuine experience. He also hooked us up with his cousin and the next city we visited who we hired as well. I have done this in a bunch of countries, Vietnam, Egypt, Jordan, Nepal, etc, and really makes the trip easier. Instead of buying expensive international roaming and data from your cell provider, just buy a cheap prepaid rechargeable SIM in whatever country you need service. Having both phone and data makes for a fun traveling experience. Since you can keep in touch with your people and also post photos, use the GPS and book Uber Lyft rides, which are more convenient and usually cheaper than taxes. Or if you have a SIM from an EU country you can use your data minutes texts in any member country as if you were at home from the 15th of June. Change of underwear, toothbrush, cash, and device charger in whatever bag will be on your body the entire time you're traveling. Lost bags happen and a fresh pair of skivvies can make all the difference. Also, take a water bottle with you to the airport, empty it before security then refill near your gate. Most airports these days have water bottle filling stations to make it easy. Always roll your clothes instead of folding them. It takes up less space and reduces wrinkling. Also for backpacking, keep it in plastic bags and do not sort chitters with shirts, socks with socks and so on. Keep them in a set of clothes, then you just have to get on plastic bag out and have all you need at hand. Make sure you eat fruits and vegetable. Fiber will keep you crapping regularly, and it's a good way to try new foods where you travel. Always carry a bottle of water while sightseeing on a hot day, especially ruins or a place that's located on a bigger, closed area. There might be no shop available once you cross a gate and the sun has no mercy. It also applies to long bus trips and hikes. Do not annoy airline gate agents. Or anyone else in the airport. If you're going on an around the world trip, travel westward as the time zone changes will reduce the effects of jet lag. Slow down. 
There is no need to see all the sights. Just see a few at a leisurely pace and you will enjoy them a lot more. Good examples of this are going from museum to museum in Paris and actually not seeing anything because the collections are so rich. Or driving from one national park to another in the United States without realizing how huge and how far apart they can be. Also plan your meal times according to local customs. Most European restaurants close at 2pm for a break. Good luck getting a decent lunch after that. Miners always have plasters, band-aids, on hand. You'll get blisters, and they will be very very annoying till you cover them. My first month working in a convenience store in New Zealand, I always told customers we didn't sell plasters. I had no idea that's what some people called bandages. Band-aid is a brand BTW. Don't get drunk in Tawana. I'm interested, tell me more. If you're going to a country where someone you know, Errol or on the internet, lives, hit them up for information on what to see and what where to avoid. Even if they personally don't know the area you're going to be in chances are they know someone who does and can help you out. This one has never steered me wrong in all my travels. Cheap power banks. You can find decent ones at the dollar store you just put two AAs in. Be nice. To every single person. Talk. Learn about them and their culture. Most people are welcoming and happy to have you in their country. When you show interest, they are very happy to inform you about things you won't learn in books. I am an extremely inquisitive person so I like to sit in the front seat of the taxi and talk to the driver the whole way. There are two benefits to this behavior. Firstly you will expand your knowledge and find out nice spots and hacks about the place that you're in. Secondly, I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten awesome deals just because I was friendly. In Netherlands, I took a taxi from Rotterdam to Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. It was a big fare and the driver literally took 70% off the fare. I have had very similar experiences all over the world. The most recent one was in Dubai where the front desk upgraded my room to a business suite along with access to VIP lounge. Just talk and be nice. It doesn't cost anything and the payoff is great. If you plan sightseeing a city, try to go by foot as much as possible. This way you will learn much more about the city and the people. My last time in Tokyo I was walking daily car. 20 kilometers and it was amazing to see small neighborhoods and shops restaurants which you wouldn't see because there aren't any attractions. You get to experience the culture much more. Ugly. Ugly suitcase. Or unique. Best to use bright, eye torturing colors, ribbons come off, krillin won't, you'll know when it comes out of the baggage carousel, by the screams, people will be kindly pointing at your bag, for you. Always bring a pen and make sure it's working, you may need to fill out customs or immigration papers or even just to do a crosswords to spend the time, bringing a pen takes up very little space but can be very helpful at the right time. Passport pouch inside your shirt with all cards, cash, passport, look like you're poor and the thieves leave you alone, for the most part. Secret agent 101, look like everyone else to the degree possible, blend, follow the patterns, rich man, dark alley, bad day. Ditch the normal towels and get a microfiber towel, they are lighter and smaller considerably, they also dry super fast, saved lots of space and weight. Don't exchange money, admins give you the best exchange rate. Also, many credit cards do not have international fees. Get one to use on your travels. Hotel lobbies have a great bathrooms. Find a luxury hotel, and go to the bar. Have a nice tea or a coke or something then you can use a nice bathroom, and most also have free wifi these days as well. Go eat where locals do. Food will be better, cheaper, and you'll meet cool people. Bring new music with you when you travel, preferably by an artist or in a genre that you're already familiar with. If you enjoyed listening to it, over time the music will imprint itself to your memories of your destination. And so every time you listen to it again, your mind goes back to that place. Equals. Yes, I've totally done this and it's freaking awesome. Gratuity is automatic on cruise ships. You can tell the crew you prefer to tip in cash and they'll remove it. Just make sure you tip in cash. Mandatory gratuity is also not a thing in most of the world. Buy your food poisoning medicine at home and carry it with you. 
It's not fun being in the middle of nowhere in a third world country feeling like death and not having the right medicine. Trust me on this one. If you're going to be unpacking and packing every day, backpackers, packing cubes are a godsend. I also like to carry some paracord, learn some knots, bowlin, eight and taut line hitch or to do, and hang your clothes anywhere, and of course ex officio underwear. Bring one of the wedge door stops. Use it to prevent others from opening your door at night when you're sleeping in a guest house, hostel, motel, someone's apartment, etc. It'll save you from being robbed, beaten up, or violated at night when you're at your most vulnerable. I never even thought about a door wedge, but when I stayed at a hostel we put a suitcase propped against the door so if it opened it will get knocked over and wake everyone up. Be polite and respectful wherever you go, and make sure you know the laws in the state country area. Only carry on luggage. Went to Europe from the US with a family of 5 and we only had 3 carry-ons between us. Plus each kid had a small backpack. Life changing. My kids insist on wearing the same pants all the time anyway. Vacation is the time to say knock yourselves out. Wear those M all week. Hostels are filled with friendly, well-traveled, and knowledgeable people. Great way to see the world. Just lock your crap up at night. Getting global entry is so worth it. Came back from Florence to a customs line that wrapped around the entire baggage claim area. The line for global entry had three people in it. Anyone have a recommendation for top-notch walking shoes? Heading to Paris in October and want to be prepared. Clarks. Packing cubes. They make life so much easier. It's not such a hassle to fish anything out if you've systematically packed. If you're traveling as a group, carry a single power adapter and a power strip. Far easier than carrying multiple power adapters. Just make sure the power strip isn't surge protected since the surge protection components are designed for certain voltages. Unpack all your cloths and put all your money out. Bring half the cloths and double the money. On a serious note if you're traveling for a long time, go with the flow. I've had itineraries for a whole month and dropped all of it to do something new. If you're going someplace new, don't forget to take a towel. Don't bring anything valuable with you. That means jewelry, expensive electronics, but also things that have sentimental value. When you pack, you should be able to look at every item you put in your bag and think I'm okay with losing this. I'm a photographer so that's not going to happen. Just avoid shady situations and purchase travel insurance. It's worth every penny. B. Polite. 2. Airline. Staff. Almost any travel problem can be solved by a gate agent. Being pushy or mean is not going to inspire them to come up with that solution for you. I see this so often. Yelling about how your vacation is going to be ruined is not going to get anything fixed. Coming prepared with a list of alternate flights you looked up on your phone, however, has a much better chance of success. These poor folks have like 45 seconds to fix your issue. Be proactive. If their system just sees the obvious one-stop connections but you find a two-stop through Albuquerque and Milwaukee, they'll probably be happy to put you on it and get another person where they need to go. Or if you see your flight is going to misconnect, you can even be proactive and try to get switched in advance. Airlines are used to doing this stuff for their elite customers, so the tools are in the toolbox. I can't tell you the number of times I've helped an amateur friend by feeding them alternatives to suggest, and they end up being the only people on their flight getting to their destination at a reasonable time. Also, give yourself as many chances for success as possible. The second you get in that line at the airport for rebooking, also pick up the phone and call the airline. Half the time you'll get through before you get to the front of the line, and the seats on new flights are first come first served. If your airline has automated rebooking on their website, that's even better since you control your own destiny. Be familiar with what you'll need to unpack during security before you get in line. Be ready to take off your jacket, shoes, belt, metal objects, and have empty pockets. Make sure your laptop is easily accessible, as it will need to go in its own x-ray tray. If you have any fluids in your bag, put them together in an easy to access location so the agent doesn't have to tear your whole bag apart. Keep a mental note of everything you put through the x-ray. People often leave stuff behind when they get flustered. There's nothing more irritating than fumbling around before the x-ray with half your belt off. 
trying to unpack your laptop from an impossible location while an angry lion grows behind you. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.